Well, here I am sitting beside my new bear hunting truck and I had no idea that I was going to be buying a bear hunting truck and the way this happened is just pretty crazy but I'm just going to tell you from the beginning uh, I did not set out to buy a truck the day before yesterday actually is when I bought this but some crazy things happened and I just want to tell you the story and then at the end of this I want to talk to you about this truck and I want you to help me turn this into the perfect bear hunting truck. So over the last couple of years I have been thinking that eventually I do need to get a four door pickup for the bear hunting guiding because it's just so much easier for people to get in and out and I'm taking people to their tree stands and picking them up and so forth and we're hauling four wheelers and, and all that. So. You know, I was thinking in the back of my mind as my bear hunting business, guiding business grows that I'm going to eventually need to get a four-door pickup. <clears throat> but I figured I was a, a year or two away from uh, spending the money uh, to get a truck that would work for the bear hunting. So how this whole crazy thing started actually is a vacation to Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, I've got three, my three older grandsons, they're seven, two of them are ten, one seven. And my dad is 87, he lives in Phoenix, and uh, because we're so spread out, you know, they just don't know him very well. And I'm kind of at the point in my life where I feel like I really wanted to get some of my grandchildren more connected with my dad. And he comes up to the Midwest pretty regularly, he's in really good health for 87. Um, but uh, they just don't get to spend much time with him and really get to know him. So. I told my wife, you know, we got a week here, let's just take the three older grandsons and let's jump in the car, let's drive to Phoenix and spend a week down there and uh, four of my sisters uh, that are from Oregon and California and all over the place, they, um, they were there with us and we just had a great time. Um, we did some cool things on the way down, went to the Four Corners where uh, uh, there's, you can stand in four states at the same time and uh, took our time going down. Ended up uh, spending uh, five days down there in Arizona with my dad and the kids swam in the pool in the housing development that he lives in there and the, uh, we did a lot of cool stuff and we spent a lot of time just sitting there talking with my dad and my, but my grandsons are kind of fascinated by farming. Um, and my dad grew up farming in Iowa in the 1940s and he collects tractors, so uh, toy tractors and they're real detailed uh, tractors and he spent some time just sitting there with them and talking to them about how the tractors worked and what it was like getting on a cultivator when he was 12 years old and all those different things and they really got to know him in ways that just really warmed my heart. and. Uh, you know, you just don't know how long you have with your parents and you want to take every opportunity. And uh, for him to really connect with his great grandsons was, uh, I think it was as, as impactful to him as it was to all of us. Well, so that, that was really fun and we had a good time down there. And then we decided on the way home, we were gonna come through Colorado and spend uh, some time just driving through the mountains and so forth. Well, first we went to the Grand Canyon and we spent about a half a day at the Grand Canyon and then headed back um, up through Colorado on Highway 70. And if you've ever been on Highway 70, it's, uh, it's a beautiful drive through the mountains, but it is, the traffic is unreal um, between Grand Junction and Denver. And especially when you get towards the top, there's a lot of ski areas up there and the traffic between Denver and those ski areas is just unreal. And there, it's just wall to wall at times, especially on the weekend. So Saturday afternoon, we're coming through there and it's just, uh, you know, it's three lanes and there's trucks and, and uh, everything. Uh, and it's, I wouldn't say it's stop and go traffic, but it's sort of like you get going pretty good and then you slow down. And then everybody kind of gets going pretty good and then you slow down. And, and it just keeps going like that. It's like this pulsing thing. So we're driving my, uh, uh, my Honda CRV, which is basically my wife's work car. And uh, the kids are in the back seat. And we're in this pulsing speed up, slow down situation. And it was in one of those times when everybody starts to speed up and it's really going pretty good. And then for some unexplained reason, the guy in a Jeep right in front of me in my lane just hits the brakes and stops on a dime and I just plow into the rear end to him and she come I mean the airbags went off and 
I don't know how, what speed I hit him at, but um, it was the car is absolutely totaled. And my wife has some probably broken ribs. She's got a a bruise where the seat belt was right through here. Just it's just a purple bruise right across her. The boys, fortunately, we were all buckled up. The airbags worked. Um, everything worked, and we're all okay other than my wife's pretty sore. Um, but so we got the car rolled off the side of the road. The state came with a tow truck, and all they did was pull me off to an exit, and then they left the car sit there until I could get a, a private tow towing service, which took, uh, it was, well, the accident happened at 1.30, and it was 7 o'clock before we got to a motel in the nearest, nearest town, which was Georgetown. So we sat in a car that wasn't running for quite a few hours, and it was cold, but we managed to... Uh, get to a motel and he just, the tow truck driver just dropped the car in the motel parking lot there so we had all our stuff with us. It's pretty traumatic and my wife couldn't sleep, she had to stay sitting up in a chair. Of course the boys thought it was great because there's a pool table in the lobby and, and we're in this motel for two days at 180 some dollars a night and I uh, immediately started calling trying to figure out how we're going to get transportation home. Well it, it, in a dozen rental car companies in Denver for some reason there is not one single one of them that will let you rent a car one way to get us back to Minnesota so I even tried to rent a U-Haul and uh, they just didn't have anything that would seat five people after you know quite a few hours of online and phone calls I just figured out I'm probably just gonna have to buy a car in Denver and drive it home uh, so I started looking at stuff, and then I came across this Toyota four-door Tacoma pickup, and the price was right, and I thought, you know what, I might just buy this and take it home, and then I've got the, the issue of having a, the, the right truck for bear hunting. I've got that taken care of, and I still got to figure out what we're going to do for my wife's work car, but we got other, we got, I got two other pickups, and we've got another small car, a Pontiac Vibe, that she used to use for a work car. The interesting thing about this is that I have not made a car payment since 1985, and I'm just really big on saving money and buying good used vehicles at the right price, and then not having to pay full coverage insurance and all of the things that come along with having to you know, car payments and give an interest to the money to the bank and stuff like that all the time. And so and the, this CRV we're driving is probably worth ten, eleven thousand dollars $11,000, and so we're out that. Um, the car's still sitting in a motel parking lot. I got a tow truck driver that says he knows a guy that has a salvage yard who might be interested in buying it. Still working on what we're going to do with that car that's sitting out there in Georgetown, Colorado. But for right now, this is the pickup that I bought in Denver, and I managed to get a ride. I mean, I mean just getting 40 miles into Denver was quite a challenge, but I, there's a guy that worked at the liquor store there, and somebody told me, he said, he go. I think he's going to Denver on Monday morning. And so I called the guy, and he says, yeah, I'll take you in. I gave him 80 bucks to take me to Denver. And then I bought this truck and then drove it all the way back to Georgetown, loaded all our stuff in the back of it and we got home last night. So that's how I ended up with this pickup and that's where we're at right now. And so I feel like I'm standing here beside what is pretty close to an ideal bear hunting truck. And I would like to have you guys comment and tell me what should I do with this truck. I'm gonna to try to make the coolest ideal bear hunting truck out of it. And uh, I want you guys to help me decide um, what all to do with it because I mean do I need a brush guard on it? Should I have some auxiliary lights on it? Um, it's got a topper But the topper is not the same color as the truck which I, I, I love the fact that it's got a topper I just don't like the fact that it's the wrong color. So should I get a different topper? Should I paint this topper? Should I leave it as it is? Give me some advice on what to do with this truck and, uh, I, and Back to the topper for a little bit See, the really cool thing about a topper is that you can lock it up, and, I, and a lot of times I have to leave my truck parked in the woods somewhere, and uh, I might have a client that's, or two that's got bow cases or gun cases in there. There's always going to be bait and stuff like that in there that you want to keep clean. You want to be able to uh, close your stuff up. Um, when you're maybe hauling a bear out of the woods on a lot of dusty gravel roads, it's nice to be able to not get the bear or whatever, the things that you've got all dusty and so forth. So I like the fact that it's got a topper. I just don't like that it doesn't match the truck. So think about this. Uh, 
you know, look, look around this, see what you think, what types of things should I do that would make this the ultimate bear hunting truck. And, uh, you know, if they're somewhat affordable, I'm going to try to do some things to dress this thing up and expect to use this truck for quite a few years. So um, thanks for listening to my story, and I really appreciate uh, all of you being a part of this channel, and I do value your input. So thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you on the next video.